Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat Your Pants Hangout. My name is Joe Grabowski. I'll be your host for today. Uh, for those who don't know what Exploring by the Seat Your Pants is all about, uh, we bring science, adventure, conservation, exploration into classrooms uh, across North America and hopefully beyond. Uh, really excited for this kickoff hangout today. Today I'm being joined uh, by Diz Glithrow. She's the education lead for the Canada C3 Expedition. It's a Canada 150 signature project. Uh, it's a 150-day ship-based expedition from Toronto to Victoria via the Northwest Passage. Uh, there's a diverse cross-section of Canadians who will be on board for each leg of the journey. The overall goal is to inspire a deeper understanding of our land, our peoples, and our country. So Diz is a PhD in education. She's a veteran of over 15 polar expeditions and a recognized environmental educator. Uh, we're so excited to have you joining us uh, today, Diz, for our first C3 Hangout and hopefully the first of many over the next uh, several months. Thanks so much, Joe, and what a treat it is to be with all of you today. It's great to see classrooms from, from Alberta and Ontario and, and BC as well, and those who are live streaming in. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to have the chance to be able to speak with you today, to share with you our project and what we're doing and ways for you to get involved throughout the five-month journey that's about to begin. A little bit, I'm a classroom teacher. I, I came into the work that I'm doing now as a teacher. I taught elementary school in BC. I was a high school teacher in Kingston, Ontario. Uh, for years, I worked for Students on Ice, which takes high school students on expeditions to the Arctic and Antarctica. And most recently, I've been a, a teacher of teachers at the University of Ottawa in the Faculty of Education. So it's, uh, my passion is certainly learning and the opportunity to work with young people. And just wanted to say thanks to Joe and the whole team at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants because the work that you do in terms of bringing experiential learning as if you can't get out there, to at least bring it virtually into the classroom and to have that immersive and interactive opportunities to connect with people out in the field and in some of our most spectacular wild places in Canada and abroad is I think one of the richest ways to learn. So it's really a privilege for Canada C3 to be working with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants over the next uh, six months. So thanks to you, Joe, and your team. Thank you very much, Diz. And um, you know, it's, it's organizations doing awesome things like what you're doing that gives us uh, our platform. So thank you. Great. Well, what I'd love to do with today is just take maybe the first 15 to 20 minutes to share with you how did this crazy project come to be? What does it look like? Who's involved with it? What are some of our goals? Uh, and then ways for you to get involved as the journey starts. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do right now is just share my screen with you so that you guys can see some of the images I'd like to share with you. And we'll go from there. And then after, um, after I do that sharing, I would love to obviously take some questions and hear what it is that really excites you about this project, questions that you have, uh, and even suggestions and ways that you would like to get involved in your class and your school as you follow along. So I'm looking forward to that part of this session for sure. All right, let me share the screen here. Okay. And Joe, you can let me know if it's uh, looking good at your end. All right, I see Canada C3, we're good. Fantastic. So how did this crazy project come to be? It was a year and a half ago when the Conservative government at the time put a call out to organizations across the country for ways to celebrate Canada's 150th anniversary of Confederation. And so it was the Students on Ice organization who's for 20 years now have been leading expeditions in the Canadian Arctic and in Antarctica. And they put together an or a, a proposal that said, we would love to take Canadians from every corner of our country on a journey around Canada's coastline. A lot of Canadians don't know that we have the largest coastline of any country in the world. We are a coastal nation, we're an ocean nation, and so much of the rich diversity of what makes us Canadians is comprised around the different cultures that live around our coastline. And with so much of Canada and, and Canadians living on, along the southern border with the United States, you know, we don't know a lot about our coasts. And uh, this is a real opportunity, I think, to showcase so many of these aspects to Canada. And what better way to do it by bringing Canadians along on a journey? So that was the simple premise of it. We found out about a year ago now when our project was 
confirmed as one of the signature projects for Canada 150. So feel very lucky to uh, have been selected. And this is a $12 million expedition, so it's, it's big, and we've got government support, the Federal Government of Canada, as well as corporate and private and, and philanthropic support. So it's a real you know, team effort in order to bring this uh, expedition to fruition. In terms of what we're doing, what does it look like? So in less than, uh, I guess it's about 35 days from now, which makes the team of 20 people who are working on this project. We're based here in uh, Elmer, Quebec, about 15 minutes from Ottawa, and there's a team of 20 of us putting this together. Certainly mindful that 35 days is coming fast, but on June 1st, we will set sail, and we are on a 220-foot icebreaker. Uh, we would love to be on a sailboat. The reason why we're on an icebreaker is because this journey is going right around the entire coastline. And we obviously need to be on a vessel that can go through the ice as we go through the Northwest Passage. Obviously, we're hoping um, there, it'll be ice free in the sense we have a clear passage through. However, there will be a lot of you know, pack ice in different places and uh, you know, we'll have to have a vessel that can do that. So this is a 220 foot previously uh, working Coast Guard vessel for the Canadian Coast Guard that has more recently been used for research. And it's going to be the vessel that takes us along on this journey. And you can see by this slide here, there's, there's so many, you know, we call this slide the Canada C3 by the numbers. Because as we travel for five months along the coastline, you know, we've got the three different oceans, the Atlantic, the Arctic, the Pacific. We are going to be touching base, says 50 coastal communities there. I think we're now up to 62, 65 communities that we're actually stopping in along the way. We travel through 15 eco zones. We'll be stopping at national parks, marine protected areas, migratory bird sanctuaries, national wildlife areas, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. All these places are special spots of Canada and, and comprise kind of the narrative of Canada. And we want to be able to share those with the Canadians who come on board, as well as all those who will be following as, as virtual expeditioners. So it's a pretty extraordinary journey and opportunity. We will finish in uh, Victoria on October 28th. So that kind of gives you a sense of where we're going in terms of how does it work? Like who's coming on this journey? How do we pick who's coming on this journey? We've broken the trip up into 15 legs and they're approximately 10 days each. So you can see from this map here where the circles are, that helps break it up. So the first leg, June 1st, leaves Toronto finishes in Montreal on June 11th. And so on each of these 15 legs that are, yeah, roughly anywhere from nine to 12 days, there's a different group of Canadians who will come on board. The participants who are coming on board are 18 years or older. We had a public application process. It was open for about a three week period. Any Canadian 18 and older was able to apply and we had over 5,000 applications apply, uh, people apply, and we are in the final days of selecting the people. So there will be 25 Canadians on board for each leg. So 25 join leg one. When we get to Montreal, they hop off. Another 25 Canadians hop on, and it'll be that all the way around the country. So about a total of 300 Canadians will get a chance to experience a part of this journey. They come from every province and territory. They're Indigenous, non-Indigenous, youth 18 to 25, and adults 26 and older. Uh, Francophones, you know, they're newcomers. Um, just a really diverse and dynamic representation of Canadians. And the hope is that anyone who's following along on this journey can look at those faces of the people and the stories of the people who are coming on board and see themselves reflected in that because we have such an amazing, diverse and uh, special country and we're out to showcase that. In terms of the themes, there's four main themes of not just Canada C3, but Canada 150 in general, the priorities of the government. And one of those themes is diversity and inclusion. Obviously, you know, our country is becoming more and more diverse. It's a special part of who we are and building mutual understanding and a better you know, connection between diverse cultures, diverse perspectives is really important and a, and a key theme of Canada C3. Another big theme is reconciliation. 
you know, as we've, uh, the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, um, the call to actions that came out last year that Canadians need to commit to and follow through on and better understand and to move through that process of strengthening a relationship and understanding between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people, that's a real key theme. You know, and it's important to, to mention on that note that you know, although this is Canada 150, it's celebrating our 150th anniversary since Confederation. We all know, or we you know, need to know that you know, Canada didn't start 150 years ago. It's we have had, you know, first peoples here for you know well over 30,000 years. You know, even yesterday in the news, uh, scientists talking about it could be even as upwards of 100,000 years since the first peoples have been here in North America. You know, that alone that there's such discrepancy, um, you know, between whether it was at 30,000 years upwards of latest, you know, news, uh, 100,000 years, it just goes to show, you know, there's so much of our history that's critical to who we are uh, as a country. And that's part of the process, too, is to really understand um, reconciliation from understanding Canada well before 150 years. And that's part of what we want to showcase. And certainly, too, as we move up into the Arctic coastline, you know, we have had uh, the Inuit have been in the Arctic for roughly 4,000 years with the pre-Dorset people, you know, and the Thule people arriving about 1,000 years ago. So a rich, rich history well before 150 years ago and a special part of the story we will share on this journey. The third big theme, the environment. I mean, we all, you know, have heard and, and we know and we're, you know, trying to better understand that our our environment, our ecosystems are changing rapidly right now. We're living in a time of history, a very critical time in history where you know, we're seeing a rate of change in the global ecosystem more than any other time in human history. And certainly, you know, I think, you know, for me personally, and, and I know in talking with youth and other Canadians across the country, sometimes it's hard to see those changes. So you don't necessarily feel the urgency or or you know the rate of change that's happening but one place you do and is up in the Canadian Arctic and having been privileged enough to have 15 expeditions up there over the the past 12 years you, you can actually year to year see changes that are happening and it really you know brings home the fact that the environment is something we've really got to think a lot about not just seeing it as as something separate from us, but something that in fact we are a part of. It's much bigger than us. Humans are one small part of a larger ecosystem and that we've got to play a more significant role in terms of ensuring not just thriving people and thriving communities, but thriving ecosystems. So that's another big message of our trip. And the last one, which is so great and you know dear to my heart in terms of my work as a teacher and why it's great to have opportunities today to connect with classrooms across Canada is, is youth engagement. I mean, it's, uh, and not just having youth, you know, join along or follow along, but youth, true youth engagement in the sense that the youth voice and the ideas that young people have, you know, from kindergarten grade right up to grade 12 and into post-secondary education and, uh, you know, youth in their early to mid-20s, like, what are some of their ideas and thinking around these four themes? And when we have conversations on this trip, with the different participants on board around these themes and not just where we've come as a country over 150 years but where are we going as a country and what matters and how do we build healthier stronger more sustainable more just communities you know the ideas that young people bring to the table are some of the very ideas that we need in order to drive change and i think creating space for young people to not just follow along, but to really authentically engage and contribute to these conversations and to this journey and the legacy of this journey is critical for all of us involved. So later on, I'm going to share with you some ways to do that. But once again, just makes today really special. In terms of the project, it's not just, you know, a ship traveling around every inch of our coastline. It, there's so many other layers to this project. And this slide kind of helps showcase that. You know, we will have a musician on board for each leg of the journey. And that Canadian musician will, you know, com compose a song well on the, the leg. And then at the end, we've got 15 different songs that celebrate 15 different parts of our, our country. And that becomes a Canada C3 album. 
You know, likewise, we have a scientist or two or three sometimes on each leg, and they're all feeding into a larger kind of comprehensive science program that uh, we've developed through partners across the country. You know, scientists looking at biodiversity in the oceans or microplastics in the oceans or, you know, some of the terrestrial ecology or looking at, you know, underwater sound surveys or bird surveys. So there's a lot of different science that will be happening and there'll be a lot of opportunity for classrooms to connect with those scientists while they're in the field during the Canada C3 journey, getting to ask them questions about, you know, what is it you're collecting? What's the research you're looking at? You know, how, how do you collect your samples? What do you do with it? Um, why does this research matter? Those kind of questions. So that's a really exciting piece too. Likewise, we're gonna have an artist on board. All right, we have a partnership with the Canada Council of the Arts. A different artist will be on board for each leg. They'll curate a, a piece of art. And at the end of the journey, we will have a, you know, a national art exhibit that uh, showcases once again you know, some, some incredible art that represents the diversity and beauty of our, our country and our coastline. And again, uh, you know, looking at these slides, there's a documentary being made, there's a book being made. At each of the communities we stop in, there'll be community events. And that's a really special part. When we arrive into these different communities by ship and the Canada C3 team and the participants on board hop off, it's not that we're sharing or you know, rolling out kind of the Canada C3 circus, it, you know, uh, but what we are doing is we're actually going to be jumping into events that are happening there in the community. So they'll be very different in each stop we make. It's a way for us to showcase what are some great things that are already happening in your community that you would love to share with the rest of Canada. And then what we bring is kind of a national spotlight. So we can share exciting youth programs that are happening in these communities or, you know, just really neat um, diversity programs or, you know, green buildings or infrastructure or just, you know, sustainable community projects that are really leading examples and models for the rest of Canada to learn about. So really excited to be working with over 60 communities across the country to decide with them or for them to share with us and decide what it is they want to share and showcase to the rest of Canada. And then that's going to be pretty special to do. We also have 15 museum hubs across the country. So there's, you know, once um, we share kind of and be able to promote where those 15 museum hubs are, you'll be able to see which is the one nearest to you. And that'll be a great kind of public education center for classrooms and school groups to go and, and we'll be live streaming into some of those museum hubs as well as classrooms. So another neat part. So as you can see, there's the 150 day journey with a lot of additional programs on top of it, which uh, makes this for a pretty crazy but, <laughs> but fun project. And here's some ways just specific for classrooms. Um, as many of you, or hopefully some of you have had a chance, we launched last month the Canada C3 Digital Classroom. And the objective behind this was knowing that the participants who could actually physically come on the journey are 18 years or older. But that leaves out a really important demographic, and that's kids who are, you know, youth uh, anywhere from kindergarten to grade 12. And, you know, for me and for many people on the Canada C3 team, we see that as one of the critical age demographics in the country, as I was saying earlier. And so the digital classroom is a way for um, us to share what's happening on the journey and to link it to the curriculum and some of the, the, the learning outcomes and objectives that you're, you're your school districts, your schools, your classrooms are studying throughout the year. And certainly our four themes of, you know, that I have mentioned, environment, uh, diversity, inclusion, reconciliation, those are bullseyes in terms of in priority areas in schools. So it's a really good fit. We put a call out to teachers across the country to contribute learning modules for the digital classroom. So those are up there live. You can download those. And what I'll do actually right now is I'm just going to Pull you over. Actually, I'll do that after. I, I have the digital classroom open, so I'll just show you a couple things on that in a few minutes' time. Um, just see so if you haven't had a chance to go on, you can see. There's also a lot of different resources that partner organizations have created. They could be video games, uh, interactive ebooks, uh, different resources that will allow you to explore some of these key themes that are linked to Canada C3 through really exciting, innovative resources that have already been created. 
Uh, and then there's also one other section too on the digital classroom I'll show you that has youth action initiatives. And there's different ways for you to, to take action in your school or in your community, or for you to share some of the projects that you're doing with us so that we can share them with the rest of the country. In terms of this, the second box there, connecting with the expedition, there's a lot of ways to do that. And I'm going to take a slide here to, to show you, sorry, what that, sorry here, we're moving around. There it is. Um, and this is um, five different ways that we're going to create content to share with you throughout the five months. So when we start setting sail June 1st, We've got these Google Hangouts that we're going to be doing with uh, Joe and Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. So today is the first of what we hope will be about 15. So if you're, you know, as you guys are part of Joe's uh, network and his regular newsletters and updates, you'll start to see that there'll be at least two a month starting now. Our next one, May 8th, next uh, two weeks from now, Scott, our expedition uh, ship's lead, he's going to give you actual virtual tour of the ship. Right now, the ship is in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, getting ready, getting out, 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 outfitted in various ways. And so he's going to take you on a walking tour of the ship. And then we've got a couple lined up there for World Biodiversity Day and World Ocean Day. And then many more from now until end of October. We're also doing um, recorded broadcasts every day or certainly, you know, every other day from the ship over the five months. You'll be able to get those daily or, uh, you know, certainly weekly on the Canada C3 website and digital classroom. We're also producing mini documentary series, like three to five minute videos that are tied to the themes. It could be on the science program, it could be around reconciliation, it could be around the national parks, marine protected areas, some of the eco zones that we'll be visiting. Uh, like the Google Hangouts, we'll also be having Facebook Live sessions. So with, with some of the participants on board, maybe the scientists, the musicians, um, you know, really interesting Canadians who are just on board the journey. Those will be, you know, sessions that you'll be able to type in as a class, ask questions to, so that'll be pretty fun. And then lastly, we're going to have a couple large major live learning events. And to give you an example of one, on August 27th in Cambridge Bay, Nunavut, we are going to be having a couple underwater dive divers go in under uh, the Arctic Ocean, just out from Cambridge Bay, and they will be doing a live dive. And they will be able to share with you what, you're, what they're seeing underwater, talk about the Arctic uh, ecosystems, some of the, the life they're seeing under the water, and a chance for you to ask questions while they're under the water. So there'll be um, probably three or four major events like that happening throughout. Just last thing I'll show you on this slide before um, I turn over just to show a couple things on the digital classroom is yesterday we launched uh, the 33 youth who will be coming on the Canada C3 expedition. So although we're still finalizing all the participants, these have been selected. So two or three youth between the ages of 18 and 25 are going to be on each of the legs. And you can see from that map below there, they come from all over the country, which is really exciting. I think there's 20 female, 13 male, and, you know, we've got, you know, I think 11 are Indigenous, you know, five of them are coming from the Inuit regions across the north. We have um, First Nation and Métis, Francophone, I think uh, six or seven Francophone, as well as another six that are bilingual. So really exciting. These, uh, these youth were chosen because of some of the, not only the diverse perspectives they bring, but also the, some of the leadership and the, the work that they're doing in their schools and their communities to really role model the, the level of engagement um, and the innovative thinking and some of the creative ideas and solutions around uh, building thriving communities that we just thought were exceptional and, and wanted to have their voices on board this journey. So it's really fun if you, yesterday's with the launch, there's a section on the digital classroom, which I'm going to turn to now. This move, and you can see here, so this is the digital class. When you come onto the main Canada C3 website, you can just cl click the digital classroom up at the top header there, and this takes you into this kind of sub-site. And right here where it says Youth Ambassadors, that was just put up there uh, yesterday, and there will be the profile there of all 33 of the Youth Ambassadors. So there might be one 
right from your city or from uh, certainly from your province. And these would be really neat people to to get to know. Um, they were they're certainly keen to reach out, perhaps come to one of the schools and give a presentation. They're certainly keen to have virtual followers, and during the expedition, they hope to be connecting with classrooms, um, and certainly would love to you know create a um, a dialogue with classrooms across the country throughout through various formats that make sense. Whether it's on the teacher Facebook group, and you can ask them questions through that through your teacher or whether it's um, you know, through their Twitter or what have you. So exciting ways for you to be able to connect with these young Canadians. You'll see when you click on one, for example, let's click on Thomas. You can see that there's a bio of him and his background, and then you'll see a video for each one. Some of those videos are ones that they created when they found out last week that they were gonna be a Canada C3 ambassador. And some of the videos are videos that they were part of their application process, so there's a mix but certainly fun, uh, a fun way to get to know who these young, inspiring Canadians are. All right, I think I'm gonna now come back here so you can see me. And Joe, if, um, I don't know if we wanna start, if you had any questions that you wanted to ask or build on, or if we wanna just open it up to the classrooms themselves to start asking questions. Sure, well let's uh, have you come back. You just need to hit the green share screen one more time, Diz. All right, let's do it. And that'll bring you back. All right, well, first of all, this truly is an epic journey. It's uh, incredible. I can't wait to follow along. I know classrooms across um, uh, Canada are excited. Um, I wanna give a few shout outs, actually. I'm just monitoring the YouTube feed. So anybody who is watching live, whether you're a classroom or an individual, feel free to let us know who you are on our YouTube live chat and uh, where you're from and shoot some questions. But first of all, I gotta give a shout out to Mava. She's uh, watching from BC. She's part of the Fish Eye Project, who will be um, taking care of those underwater dives. So I absolutely can't wait for those. So thanks for watching. Um, shout out to the BB1 class in Brampton, Ontario. So uh, they've done lots of hangouts in the past, and their teacher applied to be on the expedition. So fingers crossed uh, for that one. <laughs> And then another group from Ottawa, they're watching right now, they're taking it all in so they can bring this back and, and use this with their classroom. So um, please feel free to send us questions. And, and there's Mava saying hello everyone, awesome. Uh, we'll definitely do a hangout um, with the gang from the Fisheye Project, no question. Uh, if you're ready, Diz, let's meet some classrooms. Let's do it. All right. Let's jump to Calgary, Alberta. We have uh, Mrs. Huddy's grade two class at St. Joseph. Your microphone is on. Mrs. Huddy, can you just check your mic or maybe have the student get a little closer? We kind of hear you, but it's a little muffled. How did you choose the whole icebreaker? Sorry, it's still breaking up from my end. I'm only uh, Sorry, Mrs. Huddy, your mic was working fine when we started, but something seems to be muffling it. So if you want to put something in the chat sidebar, we can make sure um, that we get that question. I can see her typing. We'll give them a second to get their question typed in, but let's jump to our next classroom. So uh, we're going to go to Ottawa, Ontario, a grade six classroom, and really neat, a conference in Niagara right now, and their teacher is there as well. So um, she came to watch my presentation this morning, and she made sure her class was set up and ready for this presentation. So let me turn your mic on, and go ahead, Ottawa, Ontario. Okay. Um, I heard before that um, the First Nations didn't want Canada to celebrate the 150th anniversary. So I was just wondering if before you actually launched the project, if you were thinking about how this would affect 
Wow, what a fantastic first question and a, a big question. Thank you for asking. It's, um, yeah, there's, there's no question that a lot of Indigenous people across the country are not uh, necessarily embracing Canada 50, Canada's 150th anniversary. And, and rightfully so. It's um, certainly the Truth and Reconciliation Commission last year and, and, and well before that has you know, brought attention that there has been um, a lot of atrocities in Canada's past that have not been acknowledged. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs doing in order to not just acknowledge the past, but also to build um, a greater understanding and build much stronger relationships and much more just practices. And so I think, you know, it, it's it's completely understandable that a lot of First Nation, uh, Métis and Inuit communities may not be fully embracing. And we were, we knew like when we started this project, the idea of it, it's, it's part of the reason why we wanted to do Canada C3. It, it, we, the way we see this is, it's a, this is a project that will create a space for Canadians from all different kinds of backgrounds to come together on a shared journey. And, and through a shared journey, I mean, as a teacher, that's what I love about experiential learning. If you put 20 kids in a bunch of canoes and you head out for a week on a journey, you develop a, a deeper understanding about each other and who you are. And you could come from all different kinds of backgrounds, different perspectives, uh, and going through some kind of shared journey, shared experiences really starts to deepen mutual understanding, um, respect, uh, relationship. And I think on a much macro level from a, a small five day canoe trip, this is a, a much larger 150 day journey. And I think that's what we're trying to do though, create a space to share experiences, share stories, share conversations. And so I think that's great. So that's, you know, part of the reason. The other two is we've got um, several of the Canada C3 team members are indigenous and that was critical. Uh, and they've been working um, as key parts of the team to build relationships with Indigenous communities across the country. Um, the AFN um, and some ITK and some of the organizations across Indigenous uh, leading leaders and leading organizations across the countries have come on board as partners in Canada C3 of which you know, we're extremely excited about and it's, it's you know, absolutely critical to the success of the project. So we're looking forward to working together to create a shared experience that will really help us um, move forward together as a country. So thank you for All the right. question. Well, a big question to start and uh, <laughs> obviously a very important issue as well. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to visit each classroom for one question and then we'll swing back maybe and we'll get each class to tell us something about um, the C3 that really excites them, something about the project coming up that they're excited about and see if we can grab another question too. So. Um, we did get a question typed in from Calgary. Um, there we go. What um, what animals will they be studying on the journey? Hey, great. Well, there's you know certainly being a coastal journey, there are there's a lot of uh, marine mammals that we will be looking at. Part of one of the scientists group are looking at orca whales. We've got um, another certainly migratory birds. Seabirds is a, is a big one. There's going to be a, a migratory bird study that's going to be carried out throughout all 15 legs of the journey, so that's exciting. Uh, when we get up into the Arctic, there will be you know, some work being done at marine mammals and looking at biodiversity, so that might include you know, from polar bears to, to seals to walrus to the different species of whales. There's bowheads, um, we've got blue whales, We've got orcas, humpback whales, say whales, finback whales. So there's certainly a diverse, uh, you know, collection of large mammals um, that we'll be seeing. And certainly, you know, with fisheye project and doing the dive, that allows us to be able to to look at some of not just the larger mammals, but also look at some of the diverse uh, marine life that's much much smaller and 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 more unique. And so we're certainly looking forward to that as well. Uh, there will be some land terrestrial mammals we'll be looking at also as we go into the parks. I mean, you could see see anything, you know, when you look at the coastal lines, you know, when starting in the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence and some of the animals, species you'll find there, 
versus out on the west coast and some of the species you find there it's just it's so diverse and a, a chance for us to really share that diversity not just culturally human wise but uh from animals and species wise is pretty exciting all right great all right. question thank you very much great twos um, our next classroom are close to me at the moment in Niagara Falls, Mrs. Dominski's grade sixes. Let me turn your microphone on and go ahead with the question. If you could change one issue or concern in Canada, what would it be? Wow, another great question. See, this is a great example why we need young people's voice and questions and perspective as part of this, part of this journey. Thanks for that. Uh, in terms of Wow, one issue. I don't know. You know, our themes, I can't answer that in terms of picking one theme as being more important than the other. I think for me, it's really about, it, it's more about like, how do we collectively build thriving communities and thriving ecosystems? Because to me, that's the issue as collectively as a country going forward. And not just me, I think a lot of us is, we need to, when we look forward to the next 150 years for Canada, it's a critical time. We know that, you know, from an environmental perspective, we know from a, a social justice and, and equity and, and a rights perspective, um, we know that there's a lot of work that needs doing. And so, yeah, I think he, he, yeah, we're good. the issues are all interconnected. And so, you know, rather than picking one theme, I think the, the issue is to see the connections between these themes more and to be able to look at um, the building of healthy, sustainable, just communities and thriving ecosystems as our goal and, and how do we do that? Great question. All right, another great question. Um, this next one came in uh, from Mrs. Anderson's class, she, uh, grade eight classroom. They're uh, watching live, they're on camera, they're just having a little bit of mic trouble today. But it's another good question. It's when you're traveling in First Nation communities, and if you find issues like infrastructure or unsafe drinking water, will there be any actions to follow up after the expedition? Wow, good Joe, one. you lined up some uh, you lined up some ringers today. <laughs> another great question. Thank you to Mrs. Anderson's class. Yeah, you know. There's no question. You know, it's it's interesting when we think of you know celebrating Canada's 150. It there's a lot to celebrate and a lot to showcase. But you're you're drawing a really important attention that there's also there's a lot of challenges and you know infrastructure in First Nation communities. Um, you know some of the statistics you see for First Nation communities are absolutely appalling. You know as a Canadian, um, in a non-Indigenous Canadian, I mean it's 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 absolutely, it's horrific to see some of the statistics we see. To think that there's so many First Nation communities in Canada with unsafe drinking water is, is completely unacceptable in 2017. And, you know, there's no question we're going to be going into communities where, where, where we experience, the particip participants on board will experience and, and witness. And, you know, I think paying attention to that and, and working together with the community to see what solutions, you know, make sense. Um, on the ground by them. You know, Canada C3 is not going into, you know, we're a journey. We, we're not necessarily, you know, arriving to be able to, in that moment, create the change, but it'll become part of the dialogue that's going to happen and drawing national attention to what really matters to Canadians collectively and do just that to to try and figure out you know why why and what is needed to ensure that uh, these critical changes happen and it's not there's no one silver bullet nor is there one organization I mean it's a truly collaborative national coalition of, of organizations of government all three levels of government and certainly and most importantly it's the people on the ground in those communities that that need to um, you know lay out kind of to, to put the vision together in terms of, of what is needed to drive the change. So we're thrilled to be working with so many communities that are excited to, to collaborate on this. And it's a, just a fantastic question. Thanks for asking. Yes, we definitely have a group of, of really tuned in classrooms who have really put some thought into some of the issues that, that might arise on the journey. So, um, you know, I always love uh, the level of questioning. So keep it up. You guys are awesome. Um, Mr. Richard's group, they are 
joining us from Amherst View, Ontario. They're a grade six, seven class. And your microphone should be on. What have you noticed about the climate change in the Arctic? In the Arctic? Ah, great question. Uh, I mean, personally, my first trip to the Arctic was in 2005 traveling with high school students and we went from uh, we were in Greenland we went from Iceland to Greenland to the Canadian Arctic and you know there was places that we saw there and, uh, to give you a very specific example uh, there was a place in Greenland one of the fjords we went down and as we were sailing down this five kilometer long fjord on the ship the captain of the ship who spent many years navigating up in the Arctic waters he made an announcement and shared that you know, just 40 years ago, you couldn't even bring a vessel down that fjord. It was full of ice. And to think in, you know, that short time period, my life, my, since I've been alive, you know, the, the ice has retreated, or the glacier, you know, the, the Greenland ice cap has retreated a distance of, you know, four or five kilometers down that fjord, which now allows the ship that we were on to come right down that fjord. It was incredible. The other neat thing is when we, we stepped foot onto essentially the, the beach, the sediment beach there as the glacier retreated, it leaves kind of a, an area of, of beach and rock that you could get out and walk on and explore. And we hiked up onto the glacier there. And one again, one of the scientists on board, he took a, a Google, a satellite image from Google Earth of, of where we were standing right there on the beach that was taken just eight years earlier. So eight years earlier, and it showed where the ice cap was going down to. And it, it, was, it came down another couple hundred meters. So thousands of cubic meters of ice, you know, had disappeared in eight years. And we were now standing on a beach that just eight years earlier was still part of the ice cap. So it was, for me, that was one of those, those aha moments as, as not a teacher, but as a learner in the sense that my, you could viscerally feel the rate of change that's happening across, um, the Canadian Arctic and, and the Arctic in general. And to be able to see that, it really brought, there's no textbook or there's no, you know, scientific article that gives you that kind of raw, visceral, personal connection to climate change. So to be able to stand on that glacier that day and to see the science right there before me uh, is something I'll never forget. And certainly as an environmental education educator, it really uh, inspired and affirms the work that I'm doing. So great question. Yes, and, and Canada C3, it's such a great opportunity to shine a spotlight on some areas that many people um, haven't visited, get an opportunity to visit. So you're really putting a good spotlight on what's happening in our north. We have a question on our YouTube live page. Um, our class in Brampton, BB1, they're wondering, Diz, how did you um, and the team choose which stops to make on the journey? Which stops to make? Is that correct? Did, yeah. Oh, sorry. How, how did? Yeah. How did you choose to make the stops? Okay. Yeah. I mean, part of it was just looking as we drew up the itinerary in terms of of where the ship can go. I mean, the ship, a two hundred twenty foot icebreaker, can. There's certain places it can go and not go based on the water that it draws, the depth of water. Um, so once we we mapped out the itinerary and also keeping in mind we need to pull this off in 150 days. We were then able to start to determine, okay, where, where do we have time to stop and where are we able to stop? And then we just started reaching out to those communities across, across the country. Then that started a year ago. We, the first few team members for Canada C3 started reaching out to communities a year ago and sharing about the project and, and uh, you know, roughly the time be coming through and, what is it you'd like to do uh, with us when we arrive and you know how can we showcase the great work that's happening in your community so part of it was you know just simply logistics in terms of where the ship could go part of it was which communities were really interested to to be a part of this um that that felt like they had something really excited they wanted to share with the rest of country and we've just kind of gone from there so it's um as i said it's roughly 62 63 stops but the other thing too is not all the stops we'll be making our our communities. Some of the stops we're going to be making are national parks or or you know marine protected areas. So we'll be having um, kind of you know wild natural areas as our stops or sites of interest, whether those are historic sites or 
UNESCO sites. So there's a real mix. But it also will draw attention that the communities, once we get out of leg one, two, three, where there's, you know, a lot of, a, a huge number of the, the population of Canada, you know, as you move from Ontario, Southern Ontario and through Quebec. And then when we, as soon as we go from St. John's North, I mean, you start to see there's, um, the communities are obviously much more spread out, much smaller populations. So you'll really start to feel the demographic spread, you know, as we go along this, this journey. All right, great question. Thanks so much for watching online, uh, BB1. Uh, our final group joining us live on camera, it's a double grade five, six classroom from uh, Waterloo, Ontario. Ontario. And your, your microphone's on. Your microphone's on. Okay. <laughs> All right. um, what do you think connects communities throughout Canada? <laughs> oh, no. Nice one. Nice one. I grew up in uh, Cambridge, Ontario, so Waterloo was in my backyard, so great to connect with you guys. What connects communities? Wow, great question. And it's, you know, when you think we have such diverse communities across Canada, I think, I mean, for me, like stories connect people. And when you think about um, the diversity across these communities, to have this experience that will allow the different stories, the different priorities, um, the things that make communities unique. And although there's no two communities the same in our country, and there's based on the geography with which it's situated, based on their, the historical um, you know, context of that community, as well as you know, the relationship that people have with place and community, so no two are the same, but there's similar things across all of them. You know, there's, we're all shaped by the landscape. We all have a relationship to place. And we all value wanting to live in communities that are healthy, that are thriving, that provide opportunities, that inspire us. You know, and I think uh, that that's what draws us together. I mean, it's, it's special within our own community, but then when you connect the dots between all of them in Canada, you, you can you know, connect and build a pretty special national narrative. And I think um, that's what we hope to do with Canada C3. All right, another great question. Uh, classrooms, um, tremendous questioning today and Diz, great answers. Thank you so much. Um, if you're up for it, Diz, why don't we visit each classroom and maybe they can send a representative to the camera to tell us what, um, what they're excited about, about the upcoming journey. So Mrs. Huddy's group and um, Mrs. Anderson, if you just want to send those uh, answers in through the chat sidebar. But let's go to Ottawa, to the group with Mrs. Kornick at the moment. Um, what is something you're really excited about this upcoming journey? One second. Okay. Oh, okay. Here comes someone. There we go. Um, I think that I'm most excited about how you're, um, that you're including everyone, including Aboriginal people and youth and, and older people. And I think that it's really good that um, we're all exploring our land. And I think <laughs> Hey, thank you. That's great to hear. All right. That is a great answer. Uh, Mrs. Huddy's classroom. Uh, oh, there it is. They're excited about seeing the Northwest Passage and learning from the scientists along the way. We'll make sure, Mrs. Huddy's class, that one of our Google Hangouts will, will take place during our, our trip through the Northwest Passage. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And while we have Mrs. Huddy's class, yours was the first question that didn't come through, and I see it here, and it's it's how did you choose the, the polar prints? How did you choose the ship? And great question. We, because this is a, a journey celebrating Canada, we, we wanted it obviously to be a Canadian vessel, a Canadian flagged vessel. And I'll be honest, uh, it's hard to find. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of Russian icebreakers or different flagged icebreakers that work in our Canadian Arctic. We don't have a large fleet of Canadian registered Canadian flagged vessels. So the Polar Prince, which now will soon be uh, painted and ready to roll, and it's going to be called the Canada C3 ship. So it will, um, 
it is a former Canadian Coast Guard and it's Canadian flagged. So it was one of very few, but it's also just a fantastic vessel. You know, although 220 feet sounds large, it's, um, it's got a great history, a lot of, uh, it, it works really well as a research and educational platform. So we're thrilled to be using this vessel for our journey. All right, Mrs. Anderson sent us an answer. They're really excited to see the remote parts of Canada that they might not see otherwise. And they're especially excited to see Newfoundland. They've got a student whose dad's from Newfoundland. Awesome, that's great. And when we're in uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, we're also going out to a, a really neat spot, Fogo Island. So there's, there's some pretty special stops along that coastline. So great to hear that that's an area of interest and we'll be sure to do some uh, Google Hangouts live from there. All right. Um, Mrs. Nielsen in Waterloo, I'm going to turn your microphone on. Microphone on. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm really excited to like see all these different communities that like I would never experience otherwise, or communities that like I probably might have never heard of. Mm -hmm. That's that's great to hear. Hear. And that's that's the essence of the whole trip behind you know C three is to really to connect us as Canadians, no matter where we're from, to get a better understanding of all these coastal communities that make up uh, this longest coastline of the world and to give us a deeper, not just understanding, but appreciation. It's a pretty special country we live in and the more we know about it, the more I think we can celebrate it and, and help shape its future. All right, and BB1 watching along in Brampton, they're excited to virtually visit some parts of Canada that they've never seen before. And then our final class, um, Mr. Richards, if you guys can still hear us, go ahead with something you're excited about. Okay. Um, we're most excited about for when um, this comes to Canada for, Kingston. I mean, Kingston, for um, the, the mission on the I've seen the boat. Yeah, yeah see the boat. That's awesome. Well, we're, we can't wait to get to Kingston. It'll be one of our first few stops. We're there June 4th and 5th. And June 5th is World Environment Day, so pretty special day. But come on down to the ship. We would love to have you down. And uh, there'll be a team of folks there. And we're going to have um, you know, one, an education event that'll be happening somewhere near the ship. And I'll, I'll reach out to Mr. Richards in your class once we have those final details confirmed. But we've also got a giant floor map that uh, we'll be pulling out that you can get right on top of and interact with. So there'll be a chance to see the ship and be hands-on more with the journey. So we'll see you in Kingston. All right. Well, Diz, uh, thank you so much. A few classrooms have had to have said goodbye and thank you because their periods have come to an end. But um, this is such a great trip. This is such a great initiative. The whole Canada 150, but being a signature project, it's it's amazing. I can't wait for more hangouts. I'm really excited for the virtual tour of the ship coming up. Um, again, thank you so much for sharing everything and, and getting us primed and ready to follow along for the next, um, next five, six months. Thank you, Joe, and, and thanks to all the classes for your interest today and for joining in. We're thrilled to have you along as part of this journey. You're officially virtual Canada C3 virtual expeditioners and we will look forward to connecting with you live from the ship over the next five months. Take All care right. guys, we'll see you in touch. All right, I'm gonna turn on the microphone so the classrooms can say goodbye and thank you. It's gonna be a little quieter than usual because a couple of microphones aren't working, but go ahead classrooms, say goodbye and thank goodbye you. And thank you. Uh, All right, and Diz, thank you so much for the first hangout, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Sounds great, Joe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>